Okay, single displacement and double displacement are probably the most challenging. Reminder, for both single and double displacement, you're gonna have to have your, the sheet that I shared with you on Classroom, which has your activity series and your solubility rules. Okay, so first thing is when we have something like this, is we definitely wanna identify the charges of all the stuff. Okay, we need to identify what everything's charge is, so when we go to the other side, it's gonna make life easier. Well, aluminum always has a three plus, so we can put that, okay? Oxygen always has a two minus, so we can put that. Okay, however, lead is a transition metal. It changes from time to time. So we need to see what is the charge of lead in this situation, okay? Um, and in this case, uh, we have PVO2. So we're gonna go ahead and put a one right here. Okay, I'll actually get rid of this so you can see how this works. Okay, we'll add a one. We'll cross our charges, we get one minus, we get two plus, okay? From before we left, we remember, okay, now we gotta look at these. Okay, oxygen does not have a negative one charge. Oxygen has a two minus charge. So we need to multiply this by two to get negative two. Anything we do to the right, we gotta do to the left. So this is gonna become four plus, okay? So we have the charges of everything. We got plus three, we got plus four, and we got negative two, okay? This is the part where we need to get out our activity series and look and see where do these two metals exist? Is aluminum stronger than lead and can it boot it out of being paired to O? So if we look at our activity series, we'll find aluminum is about a third of the way down. Okay, so it's probably about eight elements down. Lead on the other hand um, is, is about two thirds of the way down, closer to the bottom below the word decreasing activity. So lead is weaker, aluminum is stronger. So therefore, it can bump it out. If it was the other way, if we had lead right here and aluminum right here, that would not happen. We would just write no reaction on the end. But because aluminum is stronger, we can go ahead and cross. So we're gonna do exactly the same stuff we've done before. Okay, we're gonna take aluminum, we're gonna put it right here, we're gonna bond it to O. Okay, we've, we're creating a new compound, so we're gonna have to cross charges, but for now, that's good. Okay, and then lead, PB, is gonna get kicked out. Now let's cross our charges. Well, we said that aluminum always is three plus. Uh, oxygen is always two minus. So when we cross those, we're gonna end up with Al2O3, okay? And now all, all we need to do is go ahead and go back and balance. I'm gonna get rid of some of this because it's gonna drive you nuts probably, okay? So um, aluminum, I see two and two, and, or sorry, I see one and two. So I'm gonna put a two to balance it there, okay? Leads, I see one in each place, okay? But oxygens are gonna be a problem. I have two oxygens here and three oxygens here. So I need to combine those to get a number that both two and three can multiply together to get, which is six. So I'm gonna put a three right here to make six oxygens, and I'll put a two right there to make six oxygens. Now, that's gonna mess up everything, but that's okay, it's a pretty easy fix. We now have three leads, so we'll put three leads right there. And now we have four aluminums, so we'll erase our two and put a four. We've balanced, we've made sure that our activity series works, we are good to go.